Pax Romana, a Roman peace, is the result of the end of all the civil wars. Now, Rome's been fighting them for about 100 years until you get down to Augustus. He ends the civil wars, he beats his foes, primarily Mark Antony and Cleopatra, and after which he can really stabilize the empire, stabilize Rome, build it up, and really usher in a new period of prosperity. And within that prosperity, of course, there are gonna be uprisings, famines, riots, but overall, what he puts in place is a monarchy, and a monarchy that lasts. The Arapacus Augusti, the Arapacus, the altar of peace of Augustus, recognizes and celebrates that peace and security and stability that Augustus gives to his citizens all throughout the empire. Bound in 13 BC, it's dedicated on January 30th in 9 BC. January 30th also is the birthday of Livia. And this stands out not just as a celebration of peace that Augustus brings, but it's also a dynastic monument. And you have a procession on the outer wall, which depicts many members of the Roman Senate and the priests, but also many family members of Augustus, including Agrippa, including his wife, and including many other relatives. You have many scenes that depict the mythology of ancient Rome and the family of Julius Caesar and Augustus, the Gaines Julia. You have mythological panels of Mars with Romulus and Remus and the She-Wolf. You have Aeneas making a sacrifice. You have a depiction of peace herself or of Venus, the ancestress of the Romans. And you have Roma flanked by the representations of honor and excellence. On the inside, the altar is decorated with another procession with the Vestal Virgins and sacrificial animals, as well as personifications of the peoples, the provinces conquered by Rome. Half of the outer wall, or the Temnus wall, is covered with vegetal scroll work. This goes back to the Hellenistic period, this trend and tradition. What you have is acanthus leaves, and interspersed throughout them, you have fruit, you have flowers, you have birds, you have lizards, you have snakes. So it's teeming with life, teeming with fertility. And this is what the age of Augustus is celebrating and ushering in. Augustus ended the civil wars and it's a new age of prosperity and now you have one man in charge to give you those guarantees of life and the pursuit of happiness. Why do we have the Arapaca still today? Why is it so well preserved? Well, the Campus Martius is a floodplain and over time, material from flooding is deposited on that floodplain. And by the time of Hadrian, you already have the Arapacus in a pit, but still visible. Go forward another century and you pretty much have it buried. It disappears and it's preserved under later houses and even a palazzo. And in the Renaissance times, some of those reliefs are dug out. It's miraculous, so well preserved and very much appreciated, but too difficult to do a full extraction, to do a full excavation until the fascist era. And they use high tech to extract the rest of the Arapacus. They use liquid nitrogen to freeze all the water and extract the Arapacus out in sections. Arapacus was placed in a museum next to the Tiber River, next to the Mausoleum of Augustus. By 2006, a new museum was constructed around the Arapacus. This was designed and built by the architect Richard Meyer. The gleaming white Italian marble of the Arapacus is inspiring. Originally, white marble, statuary, and reliefs were painted. Over time, being buried for so long, that material wears off. And we just have usually some traces at most on statuary and reliefs. What did the Arapacus originally look like? We know it was colored. And on some occasions, like on April 21st, the birthday of Rome, color is projected in light on the Arapacus to give an idea of what it may have looked like. But it definitely was colored.